is love is love on the queer family podcast love is love once they figure out i'm gay they'll like tell their kids to not talk to my kids and that's been a great like lesson on Ugh. learning to love who you are and where you are no matter what other people think welcome to the queer family podcast the show all about what gay no you don't even know what i say the show all about family yeah but with but with gay thank you oh my i thought you would know the whole spiel because you listen every week hi everyone my name is jamie i'm your host do i listen every week there you go and right. there's my wife joining us for a little intro to help me introduce season 17. What? 17. Oh that's, God, that's crazy, insane. right? It is. It's really insane. I can't even handle it. 17 seasons of pure queer family goodness. We're talking about like almost seven years of this show. Over 200 episodes, maybe almost 300. I don't even know, Anne. I don't know. I don't know. Oh my God. And I have a really I'm great- i math teacher. <laughs> clearly. I have a really great season lined up. We've got some- um, you know, all the things, all the things. We've got adoption. We've got surrogacy. We've got IVF. We've got lesbians. We've got gay men. We've got trans parents. We've got it all. Non-binary. We're covering it all. So get ready. Strap in because here we go. And today's guest is Tyler. Hi, Tyler. <laughs> well, he's not here right this second. Yeah, but hi, Tyler. So Tyler grew up really Christian and was married the uh, heterosexual way as you do, popped out three kids and then came out and like, as he puts it, blew his life on fire or something like that. And it's a really interesting story. And I really love Tyler because of the insight he gives into, you know, how hard it was to come out, you know, when you have religion so strong in your family and in your blood. And um, I, I spoke to Tyler before all the stuff has gone down with the politics. And I want to say to everybody, we're recording this intro a little early. We're recording this on July 23rd because you never know in the, today's political climate, something crazy might have happened. As of, as of right now, as we know it, Harris is about to become our presidential candidate for the Democrats. That's where we are right now as we stand. Yeah. And as y'all know, things change so quickly right now. It's freaking bonkers. But I talked to Tyler before I even knew about Project 2025 and the Heritage Foundation and what they want to do. The insanity. The insanity, <laughs> right? But this, you know, and so Tyler's story really made me think about like the threat that these ultra, ultra, ultra huh, religious, I'm sorry if you're religious and it works for you, it doesn't work for me, but. Well, there's a difference between being religious and being ultra and trying to force your religious view on everybody. Well, right. Like and well, also just like make it the same. American lifestyle. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, we can, we can all be different here. Let's, let's celebrate differences. Huh? How about that? But so, oh my God. So it's got me thinking about that. And, uh, I want to share just a couple of podcasts. I know they don't even know me and this is not an advertisement for them. I probably should reach out to them to do like a cross promo, but I don't have the time. So there's one we're listening to. It's called extremely American. Yeah. And tell them about it, Anne, while I pick it up. Yeah. Well, and it's it's about a particular Christchurch Christ Church in Idaho. Idaho. And yeah. Moscow. Moscow. It's spelled Idaho. like Moscow. Okay. Um, the city in Russia, but it's it's um, pronounced Mo differently. Moscow, Idaho. And what this basically the head of this church, he built his own church, is trying he is trying to basically spread across the country and make America an extremely Christian nation. Yeah, they're um, starting with the city and, and they're starting buying up the land city. there and it's crazy. Oh my God, it's very interesting. You need to listen, it's so good. And then what I've also been listening to, and Anne, you too, it's the newest season of Slow Burn and it tells the history basically of the civil rights movement like starting in the 1970s. So we talk about Harvey Milk. It's really fascinating and it's really eye-opening to hear all the rhetoric and we know this all the rhetoric that was spouted in the 70s against gay people is now literally being used against trans people it's the same freaking agenda yeah. they've just swapped out the group the, the marginalized group as they would put it there's so much because the gay group has gotten too big oh yeah so now they have to find a smaller more marginalized yeah. group 
It's the really, target. It's so crazy. This world is at, like ev- any day I wake up and I, I can't, I don't even know who I am. I can't wait to listen to the news. I can't yeah, wait. Jamie. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. But like, I don't even, like my dad would be so proud right now. All I do is like check out the news. I'm like, Ann, are you ready to put the news on when the kids go to bed? And then when I wake up in the morning, I'm looking up all my news podcasts, also the Queer Family Podcast. Like we always have to check that out. Right? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Anyway, this is going to be a fantastic episode. I cannot wait for you to hear it. As always, uh, you can always find me on social media at the Queer Family Podcast, and you can email me if you'd like to be a guest at the Queer Family Podcast. I'm trying to get all of the stories. So if you think you have a story that hasn't been told on the show yet, please reach out and let me know. And Let's do it. Let's tell the stories. Let's normalize this shit. Because this is the show that highlights, celebrates, uplifts, and normalizes LGBTQIA plus families in all of our beautiful identities. And it's really important. And my wife is looking at me like I'm crazy. But it's you true. can find me in the reels <laughs> and the posts that Jamie forces me to take part in and in these intros. Uh, so if you're looking for me, that's where you will find Anne. Yep. Yep. Cause peace. 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 All right. Let's roll this tape. Nicole, Jerson, Helen, Beulah. I bring everybody with me on my shoulders. I bring everybody to roll this tape and also enjoy the beautiful sponsors we have who you will hear about. <laughs> Later. <laughs> roll that tape. Yeah. Queer family podcast. Love is love. Hi, Tyler. Hi. It is wonderful to meet you. Excellent to meet you as well. I don't know much about your story, except for the fact that you emailed me from the airport. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, that sounds interesting. Come, like, come on in. <laughs> <laughs> See, you don't have to think too hard about these emails, folks. You just you just write it, <laughs> even when you have kids hanging on you and you're an, at an airport and you're stressed out. All right, Tyler, you know what? Without further ado, let's get into who you are, Tyler, and why you are here talking to the Queer Fam Squad. Let's do this. Are you ready? Absolutely. Okay, on your mark. Get set. Go. My name is Tyler. I am a gay dad of three, and I am what I like to call ex hetero. And so I was <laughs> married to a woman. We had three kids. Um, we were very involved in the church and then uh, started to shake things up about two years ago. So I basically set my life on fire and now we microdose on therapy and feelings <laughs> with all the chaos everywhere. Boom. Is that it? Are you done? You did yeah. it. Yeah. That was amazing. Ex hetero <laughs> is my new favorite <laughs> word for June and July. The, that's my next, my new one. Ex hetero. I, I like it. <laughs> Where'd you come up with that? You know, you hear things in passing and I try to deal with everything through humor. So I want to make it all funny. Mm-hmm. Same. So. Same. All right. So let's dig in. Tyler, you were married and you and your wife popped out three babies. Yes. <laughs> let's go into this. Let's take it down Tyler's lane. That sounded weird, but you know what I'm saying. It's all good. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> we might actually call the house that now. <laughs> oh my God. That's amazing. Yes. Yes, please. Um, so for context, uh, I grew up in rural North Carolina, uh, still in North Carolina, and it was uh, very like on the farm kind of a thing, uh, except not probably more in the woods. <laughs> so my family, I uh, come from a large family and things with like being gay, uh, there just wasn't any like representation. Like mm-hmm. you were honestly better off being a child molester than you were being oh gay. God. Oh and like, it's so backwards, right? <laughs> it's wild. Um, so very That's so wrong <laughs> and, and funny on all the wrong reasons. <laughs> I mean, it, it just kind of builds the platform for which I go because, you mm-hmm. know, a lot of people are like, how could you just pretend? But anyway. Right. So grew up very religious, um, was always afraid of God and what he or she might do. What religion can I ask? It was very like Christian based. So like the New Testament mega church revival, my family was very much a part of that. Oh, like the Christian music and the, yes. and the like I've seen I've seen videos of yeah. like these mega churches and people like hands raised and and the and it's like a rock band exactly. it's like that it's like that vibe 100%. It looks like I would really love that concert if it wasn't based on Jesus. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> 
so they were they were really into that in like the 90s um and so you know grew up with all of this like you know insane guilt about morality and I think I figured out that I had, as they like to call it, same-sex attraction when I was about 12. <laughs> um, Even that sounds dirty, right? Like it, it just sounds dirty. Same-sex attraction. And they talk about it like whispers in the pews. Like, I mean, it's just like, okay, like, all right, go on. <laughs> they're like, did you hear about Mildred, son? Same-sex attraction. Shh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So I went through school, uh, youth groups, um, you know, I played sports, uh, I did theater. I've always had an obsession with Madonna. So I guess that was another hunt. Little tiny <laughs> signs along the way. You did All do the theater. So. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and balanced it with football. I don't know how. But <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, go on, go through my 20s, get married, of course, with a girl that was also very based in religion. But like, did you date through high school too? Not really. I had a girlfriend here and there, but it was never anything serious. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of it was also um, two of my older sisters. Well, one of them had a teen pregnancy and then a younger sister eventually did. Oh. Yeah. So <laughs> I was very afraid of like, you know, anything promiscuous or sexual or anything like that. And that mm -hmm. would usually be a deal breaker. Right. Also, you were gay, so. It, well, there's that too, right? <laughs> like, I mean. <laughs> so. No, but but also that doesn't really matter. Like, right. you, you know, right. If you're suppressing it, and which which I I did too. Yeah. So meet a girl, religious as well, and you just do the thing you're supposed to do and you get married. Right, right. I was checking all the boxes. I was building my career. Like, we had this very, like dugger outlook on everything of like <laughs> you're gonna be a stay-at-home mom and i don't know make yeah. her own water or whatever you, do. <laughs> <laughs> you said dugger but you know you're not like that you wouldn't go were you gonna like homeschool and stuff like that before the reality of kids like actually hit us yes right. <laughs> we were right. gonna try it <laughs> wow and like with like the christian values i don't know i know because i've seen the duggers and they they right. were like it was like the christian I don't know, cur curriculum or whatever. Yeah, yeah, no. And we had like this whole church family that was like, hey, we've got this awesome curriculum. And uh -huh. we were like, okay, cool. Like we started reading it and we were like, that feels backwards. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. so we go along um, and then COVID happens. And at this point, we had just had our third and we had kind of like stepped away from the church a good bit. And it was when uh, George Floyd was murdered Yeah, that we took a serious look at our life and we were like, this is not it. Like, we do not want to be associated with the people who are saying justice was served. And it, Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we kind of took a serious assessment. And the result of that was is that we backed out of church altogether. How did your family take that? Like... <laughs> not well <laughs> no. so i joke that in 2022 when i left my wife like i don't know what was more shocking to them me coming out as gay me coming out as atheist or me leaving her <laughs> oh my god yeah that's whoa okay yeah 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 so, not kidding i set it on fire <laughs> <laughs> you did you yeah. really did and, and you know what i'm just like a takeaway already for me like even in this day and age, like this was four years ago. This was yeah. just four years ago that yeah. there were these huge three things that you had to like ruin your family's life over. You know what I mean? Right. Like exactly. I'm, I'm quote unquoting, but you know, in just, just here now, yeah. you, know, you think we're making progress and then we're not. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. Right. Exactly. Anyway, I uh, ended up leaving her and, uh, you know, it was tumultuous for a while. Like, I mean, I, I basically like yanked her lifestyle away and I totally get it. Like, there's a lot of questions and like, how did I marry a gay guy? Like, you know, that's the kind of thing that they make movies about, you know, and, and most of the time they're like, you know, rom-coms or something like that, where everybody ends up happy in the end. <laughs> Um, so as we were going through it, she was like, you know, it, this does not feel good. And I'm like, okay, I get it. <laughs> like, you know, we eventually settled on an agreement where we were like, okay, we're going to be co-parents, like, you know, us as friends, like maybe doesn't work, maybe does like, I don't know, but we got to figure that out later. The big thing is kids. <laughs> right. Because well, how, how old were your kids at this point? 
our youngest was not even two and our oldest was six. I need to take it back because when you realize, so first of all, George Floyd, Black Lives Matter. Yes. Huge awakening, which is yes. great. And you're both of you were like, this is, nope, we have to change so much because we're not aligned with what these, these folks are saying. Exactly. When did your sexuality come to the picture? And like, how did, yeah, like I need more. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> and, and, and like all of these questions like are very common. So it's totally right, cool. Right, I kind of knew that, again, struggle with same-sex attraction, like whatever that means, as a teenager and in my 20s. Um, before I met her, uh, I was actively bisexual. Oh. So, but it was very closeted, right? Uh -huh. And this is in the days of like Craigslist and stuff, right? Like, so you could totally keep that like, on the down low and nobody knew anything. Yeah. Ooh, that's tough though. God, that's hard. Yeah. Our marriage was kind of crumbling. Like, I think we had come to the realization that like it, sexuality aside, um, we just weren't very compatible. And what was holding our marriage together was the church. Hmm. And when you remove the glue that's holding the paper mache together, it kind of just falls apart. So we had been in therapy for like a year. The way I like to describe it is that the very public reason that we split up is because I'm gay. But the reality of it is, is that like we had just too many different things that just weren't jiving. And I think we wanted different things out of life. And mm -hmm. by the time we accepted that truth, like we had three kids. Right. <laughs> and it happens. I mean, there's so much in it because, listen, I know how, this must have been so scary and so freaking hard for you. Especially when you knew, you said you knew since you were 12 that you had same sex attraction, right? Did you, right. did you say 12? Right. Yeah. So like maybe acting on it here and there, which more power to you. Right. But then there's, it's this, you know, as a secret grows, a secret became, becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So mm -hmm. I just want to give you space for that. And I want you to see where you've come, Tyler, because where you've come from and where you are, because it is a huge freaking deal. Like, ay, 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 right? Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I owed all to therapy, I guess. And that was another thing. Like, um, with a lot of religious leaning folks, like, they have this whole stigma against therapy. Mm. One of the things that was really hard was learning how to love myself, even mm. though, like, I had created this whole big lie. At that point in time, I didn't realize the amount of trauma that I had lived through. And starting to unpack that and deal with it on a case-by-case -case basis was wild. Mm. And one of the things that nobody ever tells you about coming out is that other people want you to make space for your gayness and how it impacts them, which yeah. is the most bizarre thing ever. <laughs> like, it, it's just strange. Yeah, like expand on that a little bit. Because, no, I know I, exactly, and I want to hear more. and you know, cause it's true. It is, it is. And so like with my family, like, you know, my mom and I, I will preface this with saying that like, I don't have a very close relationship with many of my siblings. The sister who lives with me is a lesbian. Had so, a girl. Right, right. Um, so we're all just fan here. <laughs> this isn't, this is one of the sisters who was a teen mom though, is it? No, 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 absolutely not. <laughs> no, you never I was, know. I was the only one who took it that far. Had <laughs> <So. laughs> a boy. I mean, like with all of this, like, you know, I would talk to like my brother and my sisters and they would be like, okay, you know, like we don't care that you're gay. That's fine. But we're still going to pray for you. And we still want to talk about your eternal soul and yeah. the jeopardy that you're putting it in. And it's like, Ugh. okay, neat. <laughs> like, oh, God. Like, the thing is, is like, well intended or not, like, you know, it makes the space very uncomfortable. And I'm also not someone to back down from conflicts. So, you know, I would be like, am I too gay to come to your cookout? Like, right. is that is that what this is? And it's like, no, we just don't want to have to explain to our kids. And I'm like, what? That's, yeah. that's an even bigger reason for me to be there. Like rainbows and tank tops and flip flops and all. Like, yes. I mean, you yes. know. Like, yes. Normalize this shit. What's going on here? 100% and just because. You, do you see this? See your uncle that you love? Yeah. yeah. Gay. Gay, gay is the day as, as long. Gay. Gay is Christmas And boom, day. it's done. Oh my God. Exactly. Oh. It, 
And it doesn't have to be a thing either. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Like, while I was going through my separation and divorce, like, a lot of my family just kind of, like, backed out, right? Like, they were like, hey, you know what? This is too much. Like, you know, since you're a Satan-worshipping homosexual, like, you know, (laughs) (laughs) like... We don't want to come to your party. <laughs> um, oh God! And so it was. It, it was a big moment of learning how to be by myself for the first time. Well, and it was necessary, right? Mm-hmm. I think something that speaks to us, especially in those moments, is how we respond and what we do with it. So I started meeting gay friends. Um, I found out that I'm a bear, and that was <laughs> wild because it's the whole thing, right? So I go from this heteronormative lifestyle to a part-time bear because <laughs> I've got my kids every other week, you know. Uh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> and oh my God, and your kids. And, and my kids, exactly. And like oh, coming from the lifestyle they were in, although they're still young, right? So right. and you and your wife together got out of the church. So did that help because like i'm so afraid for you that that mo- mom is going to be like no 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 you can't be around the kids because they can't know about you know what i mean like so fortunately uh my ex-wife uh her family is definitely um allies uh to say the least her oh. yeah her brother her brother was formerly her sister um and so that yeah exactly yes, <laughs> so. yes. okay that's all it takes, right? It just takes one, right? Like it takes one family member. Well, yeah. hopefully, well, I mean, right. sometimes it helps. <laughs> <laughs> right. right, exactly. Yeah. So, so like when we decided to leave the church, like, you know, she, she has a couple of times said like, Hey, I think I'm searching. I just don't know what I'm searching for. And it's like, okay, that's cool. Like, you know, we can, we can navigate that however you want. Um, but as far as like our kids are concerned, if you want them in a church, that's a different discussion. Because like, that's a, that's a us discussion, not a me versus you. Yeah. So for all of that, she's been really good. Um, it, and I will definitely say that my parenting style has done a 180 over the last um, two and a half years. Really? Yeah. So growing up, it was very authoritarian, right? Like, I mean, I was uh-huh. scared of God, Jesus and tobacco sticks. It was very physical and very emotional. Oh, also because you're a boy. I'm, oh, I'm just thinking oh, it through. 100%. And so there was a lot of, I am imagining, um, masculine conditioning, I suppose. Like boys act like boys. Yes. And right. like, as you see, pink on pink, like, I mean, we have started <laughs> to address that. Like, it's it's a whole thing. <laughs> it's interesting you say that, though, because I do feel like not only where you grew up and with your religion and everything, not only with that, it's just in the air we breathe. It is in society. It is so ingrained in us, this toxic masculinity and this idea yes. um, that men have to be men and well, women have to be women. And-, and it drives so much internalized homophobia that you don't even realize, which like that's a whole other concept that like I was not ready for. You know, so and I, we can definitely talk on that. I mean, go. I, I am here for whatever you want to throw down because I really am very interested in in the in masculinity and toxic masculinity and how to raise boys to try to fight against that, but also not you know be detrimental to them. You know what I mean? Right. And being a woman who is raising a boy with no male, very few male influences. So like, you know. So the whole thing of it comes down to, I guess the best way that uh, my parenting style it can be summed up is like, we are very open, very age appropriate, body sex positive, like, you know, don't be afraid of, you know, me being gay, you being whatever. Our youngest went through a phase where she was saying she didn't feel like a girl. So we would ask her every morning, like, are you she or are you they? Like, you know, (laughs) or are you he today? And people are like, you know, you can't just ask your two-year-old that. I'm like, actually, you can. Yeah. It's called not being a dick. Like, (laughs) 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 Yeah. And also they know. And also they might be a duck today, too. And that's okay, too. So that's okay. They're two. Right. Exactly. And I'm not like, I'm not trying to um, 
say that you know a, a child who is trying to find their um, identity as a right. trans child it could also be a duck like i'm not i am oh, not 100 i just want to throw that out there for yeah. everybody who's listening like no 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 no. i am not diminishing this in any way but also <laughs> yes you can ask your children all of these questions of course you can a hundred percent and one of the ways that uh, i realized i had to be reconditioned was is like I, it, like i'm a big scary dude like I'm six three. I'm three hundred and forty pounds. Like, I mean, there, like, my presence is known. You're a big guy. Uh, yeah, exactly. You take up a room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. So, one of the things that I had to realize, like, with my own healing journey, is that um, a lot of physical intimidation was used, and a lot of like, once they realized that, like, you know, I could fight back, they stopped doing it. <sighs> So in that, in that honestly, just like fucks with your head. Yeah. So when it comes to how I raise my kids, like the only thing that they really get in trouble for is lying to me. Mm -hmm. And that is like this whole soft parenting thing. Like it is hard some days and like I, dad loses his shit all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we break out the feelings wheel and we talk about how we could have handled situations differently. And we talk about how we all could have participated differently mm -hmm. and the events that led up to that. And that is like not something that my parents would ever have done. Like, do you think it's a combination of everything that happened, like leaving the leaving religion and then also finding yourself? Or is it mainly like coming out like it like it's how all much, of it. It's all of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's all of it. Like I, I started to honestly take an assessment. So what ended up happening was um, I, I eventually like cut off my parents. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you. In the end, it was something that I think if I would have come out at like 18, I, I think I would have done it 10 years ago. Mm. You know, so that ended up, it, it was part of me learning how to set boundaries with people and to say that the only way I know how to love you is for you to be over there and for us not to communicate. And in true Southern fashion, the one thing that you get a lot from the family is like, well, what if they die while you're not talking to them? They had, they had 33 years to pull it together and they didn't. Like, right. That's not my problem. <laughs> it's, it's their loss. It's their loss. Yeah. It's, oh, it's so heartbreaking though. It's so heartbreaking that parents can't just. Get over themselves. Get over, like come around, like this is your baby. I look at my babies and I think how there is nothing. nothing. There is, I don't think there's anything they could do no. that would make me stop loving. I really don't. And there are some things that I know, like if they did it, the whole world would hate them, but right. I'm still going to love my baby. So I don't understand how, how, yeah. And that's why, like, it's so in like this shit. It's so in look at, you said you were going to have a potty mouth and now I'm just swearing, <laughs> but like, it's so indoctrinated and hard to break it. It is. Well, and I think one of the biggest things that a lot of people don't want to do is they don't want to ask why. Why do I believe this? And so, like, uh, with the therapist that I have now, like, I mean, he, it, we definitely burned through a few of them. But with the therapist I have now, um, he's really good about saying, so if this makes you feel like a bad person, I need you to qualify what a bad person is. And you're just like, holy shit. Like, mm. okay, Ooh, here we go. Good. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. I'm going to use that because last night I couldn't fall asleep because I lost my temper at my son uh, mm -hmm. earlier in the day and it was Mother's Day and I lost my shit at him. And then uh, like, and he deserved it. He did deserve it. <laughs> yeah. But then I'm lying in bed afterwards thinking, oh my God, oh my God, I was so mean to him. I should have apologized in bed at bedtime when I said goodnight. I should have, I should have told him we should have had the moment, the feelings wheel moment, right? Sure. But I didn't. I'm a terrible person. And I'm going to use that now from now on because I, I, I laid in bed for an hour and then this morning on our way to school i tried to have a conversation i was like uh, orion i feel like i got really mean to you mm -hmm. yesterday do you remember and he was like yeah and i was like what was i too mean about <laughs> and he goes um, uh. he was like really trying really hard to think right. about it he, think it think of what it was he goes i don't remember like he just wanted me right so he right. had no ref recollection of this moment that i agonized, agonized over. over for hours hours and hours but a good question like what's yeah. your definition of a bad person here or wh whatever you said yeah and when you reframe the narrative like that like i mean first of all like we're all just guessing like let's just be really clear about that 
I think for so many of us, we extend grace to other people, but we have the hardest time doing it to ourselves. And Mm -hmm. that is the fundamental step of self-love. You have to be able to give yourself the great, and especially when you got three of these little hellions running around, like doing God knows what, like, you know, you got to be just as kind to yourself as you are with them. Right. And that's very, very hard. It's so hard. And I think a lot of that's cultural for how a lot of us grew up, right? Like, I mean, I think a lot of us grew up on this like grading system and we tend to try and grade ourselves, Mm -hmm. but like what we don't see is all the good stuff that we do and Mm -hmm. what we do see is all the bad shit that we do. Right. So we paint ourselves as a villain and, you know, one out of five stars. You hear that, everybody? Give yourself a break right now. Give yourself a break, everybody. Take a second and let go of that thing you're thinking about right now because we all have one in our head. We all do. We all have one. (laughs) (laughs) We all do. And you know what? That's true. That shit is going to work out how it's going to work out and you worrying about it isn't going to fix it. Yeah. So (laughs) true. God, I'm having like, like deep moments with you here, Tyler. So your parenting style did a whole 360 and a 180 and all around and rainbows. What's life like now? So you had to, your parents are out of the picture. Yeah. I know you're close with your one sister, but how yeah. about the rest of the family? And like, what's your life like now? And anything else you want to share too, please do. The rest of the family, it's very tangential. Um, you know, we kind of just have like casual surface level conversations. Like they don't want to talk about gay stuff. And it's like, I'm gay. Meredith, my sister is gay. We have pride shit everywhere. We watch Drag Race on Fridays. Like Charlie XCX is a god in our house. Like so, <laughs> and and if you want to talk about like anything other than work, basically, like it's going to get real gay real fast. And <laughs> if you don't want to hear about it, then we're just never going to be close again. Yeah. But like, for me, like I found so much peace with that because having those relationships where you had to be in a box like cause so much inner turmoil and then you do crazy shit, like get married to the wrong person and have three kids with them. Right. <laughs> so, right. To put it in a short sense, like we rely heavily on chosen family. Uh-huh. So uh, my kids have a bunch of gunkles. Uh, you know, they come over, we have brunch. My kids love brunch way too much. Cause gunkles, cause gunkles are the best. The they best. really are the best. <laughs> they get they get all the glory. They, they really do. I get mad at them sometimes cuz exactly. it's really not freaking fair. It's not. It's like <laughs> they come over and they're like, "Yes, queen, I brought you a new skirt." And then like for my son, <laughs> like they bring like, you know, these action figures and I'm like, "You can't be toxic and cute at the same time. Like what are you doing?" <laughs> it's not fair. But it's, it's good because the kids really do love them and they're getting immersed in the gay, which is they are. you know, and all love, like it's all love and beauty and like, uh, yeah. if only, you know, uh, if only the rest of the world, all the world, most of the world sees it. But well, and I think the best part about it is, is that like, not only do they get like, not only are they very comfortable with like me and my friends and Meredith and her friends, but they also see that like sexuality doesn't have to be a defining point, but it is for a lot of us because it's a safe space. And how did you broach the subject with the kids? So fortunately with my son, and I say fortunately, he's very simple in how he processes things. And that's not to say like he's dumb or anything. He just, he he is a very trusting person. And so like, you just like say, hey, the ecosystem of the world, like we took this out and put it over here. So for them, it's very straightforward. Um, my, My son has a lot of questions still. He's also eight. And so like his body's changing, like he's starting to stink and, you know, all the fun oh, stuff. <laughs> Not uh, and with my two daughters, um, they, the youngest one was relatively easy, but the older one, she was like, well, am I going to get a new mom? And it was like, I mean, only if your mom wants a new mom like right. <laughs> to go with you guys. Uh, but otherwise, like you're stuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they're just figuring it out on their own, in their own ways, right? Yeah. And the way we present like very fundamental sexuality, because like, it's so weird, like as a parent to go through this and like, think about how you're going to explain it to your kids, because we come up with all of these elaborate things. Yes. And our kids are just like, oh, green block, red block, like, got it. And you're Mm -hmm. just like, okay, I'm going to leave you there with that. And then I'm going to come back in five years and see how you feel about it. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. 
it's been great because like my my kids have all relatively somewhat embraced the lifestyle of it you know like i said we have rupaul nights and we sit down and we watch rupaul uh i'm not a bedtime story dad i wish i was <laughs> but like we watch music videos instead and we have a dance party mm-hmm. and with my son like he goes to lego camp like you know he's very into you know military war so like we sit through documentaries together and you know that's just that's what speaks to them mm-hmm. my two older ones are also in therapy as well you know my middle one i especially worry that she's too much of a people pleaser and so mm-hmm. i want her to get out here and like start disappointing people and that's so weird to explain to somebody. But that's hard to do if if you if you're a people pleaser. Yeah. Speaking as one myself, it's so yeah. hard to disappoint people. So like, hard. Yeah. And I tell her all the time, I'm like, piss me off. It's fine. Like I'll be a bitch for a little bit and then we'll move on. Like it's okay. Like, yeah. Right, right, right. You don't need to be afraid of it. Yeah, it sounds like you're doing a good job there. <laughs> Regardless of the fact that you're gay, that you are same sex loving, same sex attracted. Jeez. I know. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? <laughs> it's so good that you're out there in North Carolina representing. Yes. <laughs> you know? And that's a whole stitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anything else that like you want to talk about that pertains to your life and your situation and like I wonder about like school because you were with this com- community of people before and there was a divorce that's always juicy with all the yeah. parents and then of course uh oh one of them is gay and so there's that right. so like right was that a thing or no it was a huge thing and uh even just like our day-to-day life like for where we live um it's still a very conservative area like and so there's a lot of I don't want to use Republican, but like that mindset. So we have definitely come across a few instances where once they figure out that I'm gay, because I'm very unapologetic about it. Mm -hmm. Once they figure out I'm gay, they'll like tell their kids to not talk to my kids. And that's been a great like lesson on learning to love who you are and where you are, no matter what other people think. Oof. Yeah, that's tough. Because, I mean, it starts young, right? Like, I mean, children are never taught to hate. They are taught to hate. They aren't inherently hateful. Right, exactly. Yeah. There we go. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Sorry. No, no, no. Yeah. And also, if if, even if you're like a parent who's not teaching it, but you're not talking against it, it just, it, it gets inside. It just, it's part of the ecosystem, whatever it is out there in the air, it gets into us. It is. And and there's so much, especially coming out and learning about this beautiful community and the history. Like June around here is insane, but (laughs) like there's poster boards everywhere. But that's good. Okay. That's good. That's good. Right. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I think so. Like, uh, but it really kind of like challenged me to start looking into other things. Like how do I introduce like black history month to my kids? How do I How do I explain to them that like Kwanzaa is a thing and like there are, you know, these communities all over the place that you can go and you can do this research because we lit, we're not stuck on a card catalog system still. Like information is at our fingertips. Like let's go get it. But it's not taught in your school. Yes. And that is a whole other thing of like, you know, this is like even just putting the foundational work of like, this is how we think for ourselves and this is how we get there. It's wild because you start setting everything else on fire, really. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know, it just recently came like a little tiny taste of it came a little bit to New York City. I have never had to like argue against the people who are fighting against critical race theory. I've never had to argue against book banning of like books that people think are wrong for, I've never had to argue against that in my community or like explain to my children why, like anything about, right. And so a little tiny taste of it, moms for Liberty, like established a little base over here and has infiltrated my school district that houses Chelsea, which is the gayest place. And you know what I mean? Like it's really crazy. And all of a sudden, like what you're saying, like, I have to start thinking about, well, because now I have to tell, I have to argue th- my case to like other parents so that they understand, wait, 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 this is really, really bad, y'all. Right. Like you need to understand 
what could end up happening because it's just, it's not something that's really on people's radars. And if you're not in the community that's directly affecting, exactly, you can just let it pass by without even knowing it's happening, which is what I'm noticing. And that is the biggest thing. Like, I mean, because for the most part, like, you know, I, I benefit very much from white privilege. Like, yes, you know, same. I, yes. And trying to explain that to people is wild. But then you get these folks like Moms for Liberty, and then they come up and they're like, have you ever thought of another way of thinking? And it's like, yeah, in 1865, get out of here. <laughs> like, we're not, we're not doing – and it's so crazy because these people are insane. Mm-hmm. It's and misguided like, and ignorant. I think that there's a side of us that always wants to approach things logically with them. You can't. But you can't. You can't, you have to be a totalist, honestly, like, and, you know, trying to explain to my kids over here, like, hey, we love everybody for where they are, but there are some things that we just don't accept. Right. If it's, if it's harming someone or if it's hateful, like I try, yeah, trying to, to explain the whole situation, especially when never have had to before Yeah, is wild. It really is. And the shit. I keep saying this, it's spreading. It just spreads like wildfire and people like seem to just like catch fire to it without even realizing that they became a part of the problem. You know what I mean? Exactly. (laughs) It's uh, interesting. And, and, you know, one of the things that I really hate about it is that it's presented as something that's so inconsequential or for the kids. Protect the kids. Yeah, exactly. Like, but again, like, you know, I kind of went through this whole big blow up with my brother about, you know, drag queens. Mm. And, you know, I was like, "Mm, I think you should look at the the church first. (laughs) Like (laughs) those, those men in dresses are the ones that are actually hurting kids. Like not, (laughs) not someone reading my kids a book. (laughs) Those are the ones you should be really afraid of. Let's be real. (laughs) Right. And, and on top of that, like, you know, I understand that everybody wants something to believe in, but like, at what cost? I could go on for days about like life and theories and all that other stuff. But you did actually talk on something earlier that I thought was really interesting was uh, toxic masculinity. Mm, yeah, let's, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> my, let's dig in. It was really weird stepping into the gay community and uh, realizing just how many things were driven by toxic masculinity and my upbringing and everything that I had done in my life beforehand. Like, I mean, when you play football, like, I mean, it's kind of hard to be like, yeah, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that's not like, like approved of in the locker room. I don't no, know. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was so interesting to me because like, I always thought of toxic masculinity when I was still in the church, especially as like a uh, scorned woman's revenge. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And it's really easy to reduce it down to that when you've been so ingrained. And mm. but when you start contextualizing like how toxic men have been, <laughs> and this is not a man bashing session, I promise. <laughs> it's um, okay if it was, but no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. I love men and women yeah. and everyone in between. Same. As long as you're a good person. Yeah, same. But like, and you start actually unpacking like how many things women just in general have to fight against in the day-to-day world. And then you start layering in women of color and men of color and all the cultural nuances. It's like, how, how can you not support equality? Mm -hmm. And equality is not like giving the same amount of people the same job. It's literally a seat at the table where your opinion is heard. Mm-hmm. And we have a responsibility, especially as a white guy, to listen and yeah. advocate and speak into those spaces where there's not a seat at the table. Yes, I agree. And I, I, I as a white woman, I, f- I feel the same way as well. And it's hard sometimes, but it is a necessity. I agree. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing with my son, especially, is like knowing that I have to explain that to him. And we do in various ways. Like, I mean, there are a lot of stereotypes that he has to come through. Uh, he is neurodivergent. So mm-hmm. people are going to think he's not as smart as he actually is, or they're mm-hmm. going to think, you know, whatever. And it's like, okay, let's take this thing where you're being misrepresented and let's apply that elsewhere because you didn't feel great here. These people don't feel great over here. And people are going to listen to you just because of how you look. 
And it's that empathy piece, right? Yes. If you can find that one, the, the plug-in, I guess you could call it, where yes. we can plug ourselves into this other person's situation because we know what it feels like to be marginalized or Absolutely. made fun of or whatever here. Yeah. I already noticed it with my son who's six. Like I see, I see the masculinity in the boys. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what their home lives are like. And, and none of the dads at school seem like super crazy, like, oh, men right. are men. You know what I mean? But right. it's still seeping into my son's life yeah. and figuring it out how to gently combat that yeah. is really tricky. It really is. It is. And I think that we all think that there's this like magical right answer. And for the longest time it was, oh, there's not a dad in the house. That's why. And it's like bullshit. Like, you know, like when it comes to kids and as their parent, you know exactly who they are. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Until they change in five minutes and then you figure (laughs) that out. But I mean, like, you know how your kids are and you know kind of where they stand. And if as a parent, you're willing to take the time with them, to explain these big concept things and very small steps, like it gets a lot easier. Mm-hmm. And, and I will say that like, I, I follow you on Instagram. Like I see, like you're doing a great job. <laughs> oh, Tyler. Well, there's not like this, like awesome answer either, you know? So like we're all combating a whole bunch of shit. Mm-hmm. Parenting is just such a big guessing game, but we all want to do it. Yeah, I know. We all want to be a parent. <laughs> I think we all just go into it so dumb and blind and then <laughs> and then realize, uh oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> what the right. hell did I just do? 100%. I think that's a big part of it. Exactly. I, I equate it to being in a blender with a whole bunch of gravel. It really is. It really is. And this is why I, I'm always like trying to glean answers from like you, who's, who's been a part of toxic masculinity and you know what it did to you. So I, I will pick the hell out of your brain to try to figure out, Yeah. okay, what is it? What did you feel? What did you realize once you started like deconstructing it and how did you get yourself out of it and what could have helped you? Like I, I will talk to you till you do not want to stand me anymore. You know what I mean? I'll be like pouring you more wine. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's let's go deep here because because we're trying to do right by our kids. Right. And there's a lot of things that are messed up in the world and I don't want my kids to have any part of that. And of course you can't protect them from everything, but Right. I'll invite you to always do that because I love these deep conversations because it's such a niche thing, right? Like mm-hmm. I mean we can sit here and go back and forth about like issues within our community or, you know, like make jokes about different things. But like when you get down to the brass tacks of it all, like especially as gay parents, like we are on our own island, even if you have support. And there is so much for so many of us that we've had to dial back from or learn to be okay with while not actually dealing with it. Mm -hmm. And I think for so many of us, like, especially in the formative years, seeing things like the AIDS crisis, like we were like, oh, God, being gay is terrible. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the reality is, is like you can't change who you love. You, you can't change any of this. Mm-hmm. And then realizing as you age that it's just the narrative that gets spun that oh also determines your idea of what everything is. Right. Right. But that's, I think, one of the reasons why I love this community so much. Like, it's it's resilient. It is hands down. Like, we may drag each other at the end of the day, but, like, you know that it's nothing but love, you know? And, and like, what I always wanted to feel for my family, I feel here. So being able to put that out there in the world and just being fucking different. Like, <laughs> it's, like, why wouldn't I? Yeah. Let's all be fucking different, okay? Because yeah. the world's going to be a lot better place if we embrace our differences. A hundred percent. Agreed. Agreed. I'm so glad you're a part of the community. Welcome. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you deserve a seat at the table, Tyler. You're welcome with us. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> glad to be here. <laughs> yes. I'm I'm so happy you came to tell your story. And like, you know, this is not the end. Now you're part of the community and I want updates and all the things. and. It's an ongoing thing. Coming out is is not a one day thing. It's a lifelong journey, right? So it is. There's going to be more to come, and you have already kids in the mix, right? So like, it's going to yeah. be a lifelong journey. Yeah, a hundred percent. And you know, I'm excited to see where we all end up. 
I hope, in the end, my kids uh, see what happened and uh, are able to more sufficiently live their truth, whatever that is. Well, you're living your truth. So that is a wonderful way to show your children how important it is to live your truth. Let's all live our truths, y'all. As hard as it can, as hard as it may be, it's important. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Tyler. This has been great. Yeah, this has been awesome. So thank you for having me and uh, thank you for letting me share my story. I love it. Can't wait to hear more. You better keep in touch. Absolutely. Queer Family Podcast. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that episode as much as I enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, feel free to listen to another or watch another. I have so many episodes for your listening or viewing pleasure. Just go pick one and, and enjoy. There's a lot. There really is. And also, if you really do like this show, please, I know I say it all the time, but please do consider supporting the show on Patreon. You're just going to go to patreon.com slash the queer family podcast. You're going to pick a tier. You're going to join and you're going to get that bonus content. And you're also going to get my love and adoration for the rest of my life. (laughs) I love you all. Thanks for tuning in. Keep on tuning in and I'll see you next time. Mwah.